Hi everybody and welcome back to video number six in chapter 13. And when we left off, we were looking at the journal entries for an installment note. Under alpha here, the uh, entry and issuance of the installment note are notes payable. It's going to be the $80,000. That's the four $20,000 payments. And the cash, which was already at present value, a $40,000 down payment. The discount on the notes payable, um, we're going to calculate that first by looking at the present value of the building. So if I take the $20,000 annuity at 11% for four years, the factor come out $62,049. The down payment's already at present value, so I add the two together to get the cost of the building at $102,049. The difference, therefore, between $120,000 and $102,049 is a discount on notes payable here of $17,951. So now looking at Bravo, the amortization schedule, we do that the same way. We start with the carrying value of 62,049 here. And we ripple that through uh, the installment amortization schedule. And again, we do it the same way. The cash that we pay based on what's on the note, uh, and the, the mortgage I should say in this case, and the interest expense is going to be <coughs> um, um, 11% of $62,049. Okay. So now we can use the numbers from the loan amortization schedule to compute the journal entries. And here at the end of 2026, We'll debit notes payable for twenty thousand, credit cash for twenty thousand, and we'll debit interest expense for sixty eight hundred and twenty five dollars, and credit discount on notes payable for the same amount. Then at the end of two thousand twenty nine, again we'll debit notes payable for the final time, and credit cash for the final time of twenty thousand dollars. And our interest expense will be $1982, and discount on notes payable will be $1982. Right off the loan amortization schedule. Okay, let's put all this into practice a little bit. Here, uh, Fooked Farms makes the two following acquisitions. Number one, it purchases a barn by issuing 6% eight-year promissory note having a maturity value of $250,000 interest payable annually. And that interest is payable annually. The company has to pay 11% interest for funds from its bank. Under number two, the company purchases land having a fair value of $200,000 by issuing a five-year zero interest bearing promissory note in the face amount of $337,012. And lastly, for our instructions under alpha here, we're going to record the two journal entries that should be recorded by Foot Farms for the two purchases on January 1, 2025. And under Bravo, we're going to um, record the interest at the end of the first year on both notes using the effective interest method. So our solution for number one, we're going to um, debit buildings here for $185,674, and we get that 
by starting with our maturity value of 250,000. We take the present value of the 250,000 for five years at 11% and multiply that, that factor times 250,000 to get $108,482.50. And then our um, present value of our annuity at 15,000 a year, we're gonna take that multiplied um, times the factor that we get, and that's gonna give, give us um, $77,191.80 for a total of $185,674.30. That difference represents the discount of $64,325.70. So that's gonna be our debit for discount. The credit will be to notes payable here for $250,000. For the land, we had a $200,000 value here. That's the capitalized cost of the land. And that's the, it represents the present value of the note discounted for five years at 11%. Therefore, the carrying value of the note at January 1, 2025 is going to be $200,000. Okay. Now, that means that the discount um, is going to be, uh, we'll take the interest expense, which is 185674 here, I'm sorry, we're going to take the land at 200000 here, less the discount of $137,012, and our notes payable is going to be $337,012. Those numbers were given in the, um, in the problem here. Okay, so now... How do we capitalize this under Bravo here? Record the interest at the end of the first year, right? And at the end of the first year, the interest expense is going to be the hundred eighty-five six seventy-four thirty. That's going to be times eleven percent. That'll be our our interest expense. We don't need to run that through a um, loan amortization schedule because we're just simply doing it here based on the carrying value times the effective interest rate. And then our cash would be $250,000 times the 6% that is given in the problem here written on the note. So that difference is going to be a discount. Under number two, relatively simple, we're going to take the 200,000 here times 11% effective interest rate, and that gives us our interest expense, and the discount on notes payable will be the entire $22,000. Okay, a lot on that page, so I'll give you a second or two to absorb that. And we'll move on. All right, <clears throat> the fair value option. The companies have the option to record fair value in their accounts for most financial assets and liabilities, including bonds and notes payable. The FASB, Financial Accounting Standards Board, believes that the fair value measurement for financial instruments, including financial liabilities, provides more relevant and understandable information than amortized costs. The FASB considers fair value to be more relevant because it reflects the current cash equivalent value of financial instruments. So, 
If we're taking the fair value option, then we have to measure the fair value. If the company chooses the fair value option, non-current liabilities, such as bonds and note payable, are reported at their fair value. In addition, the companies report unrealized holding gains or losses as bullet point one, part of the net income, or bullet point two, in other comprehensive income, depending on the circumstances. So let's take a look at an illustration. Edmunds Company issued $500,000 of 6% bonds at a face value on May 1, 2025. Edmunds chooses the fair value option for these bonds. At December 31, 2025, the value of the bonds is now 480000 because interest rates in the market have increased to 8% from 6%. So what entries does Edmonds make to, ch to record the change in fair value? Okay, the difference between 480000 and 500000 is 20000 so we're going to debit bonds payable for 20,000. That will reduce the bonds from 500 down to bonds payable of 480,000. And the credit to that's going to be to an unrealized holding gain or loss income. Now the value of the debt securities falls because the bond is paying less than the market rate for similar securities. That's clear. As the journal entry indicates, the value of the bonds declined. The decline leads to a reduction in the bond liability and a resulting unrealized holding gain for the company, which is part of net income. Okay, let's take a look at credit deterioration. We'll refer to that prior example for Edmunds Company and assume that the company's fair value change on its bond is due to its credit rating dropping from an AA to a BB. That's a big jump down. What entry does Edmunds make to record the change in fair value? Again, it was a $20,000 change. So again, we will debit bonds payable for $20,000. And this time we'll have an unrealized holding gain or loss, this time equity. So as indicated, the unrealized gains or losses due to changes in credit risk will not affect net income but instead are reported as comprehensive as other comprehensive income. All right, off balance sheet financing. Off balance sheet financing is an attempt to borrow monies in such a way as to prevent recording the obligations. Uh, different forms. Number one, we have a non-consolidated subsidiary and two, a special purpose entity, SPE. You'll learn more about those in advanced accounting. However, here the rationale is bullet point one, removing the debt enhances the quality of the balance sheet and permits credit to be obtained more readily and at a less cost. Bullet point number two, loan covenants often limit the amount of a debt to a company may have. These types of commitments may not be considered in computing the debt limitation. And bullet point number three, some argue that the asset side of the assets, the balance sheet is severely understated. That looks like a good place for us to stop this video. And when we come back, we'll take a look at disclosures. Until that time, bye for now.